How can we make the world better? By making ourselves better. The Dr. Joe Show explores how you can make positive personal change by using his groundbreaking and highly effective I Am approach to understand who we are and why we do what we do. Your small changes can have big effects. Join us now for the Dr. Joe Show with Mark Stiles of Stiles Law, Thomas McCoy, and your host, Dr. Joe Schrand. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. <laughs> nice. That was wonderful. That just happened. Yeah, that was really... And I wonder, Tom... Could you please introduce our guest for tonight? Okay. A native Californian from Los Angeles with a New England education, she found her true home in the San Francisco Bay Area, where she prepared for dating and life by attending spiritual ceremonies, working in free clinics, leading women's backpacking trips, hiking the local Green Hills, identifying as a lesbian feminist in the 1970s and 80s, and earning graduate degrees in women's studies, statistics, and educational research. She drew upon her 30 years as a social science researcher and 10 years as a relationship workshop assistant to create the dating project in her first book, 50 First Dates After 50. Hello and good evening, Carolyn Lee Arnold. Hello, Carolyn. Welcome. Hello. Wonderful yeah. to be here. Thank you, Tom. What a great introdu introduction. Thanks. Thank you. We are delighted to have you. There's there's so many areas to talk about. But <laughs> I just want to learn about the social science background. Tell me about oh. that. Let's start right there. Uh, wow, thank you. I'm a, a, um, I am trained as a sociologist of education, huh. um, and, and I have a master's degree in statistics. And wow. I was really trained to do high-level statistical research on education in which you write reports of statistics for the government. It, that's really boring, turns out, and you don't see a teacher <laughs> or a student. So I ended up in a wonderful, my home, my place I really needed to be was at a community college doing the institutional research, which meant I get to do studies on the students, surveys, statistical analysis of who was, you know, what groups were doing well, who needed support, things like that. So I was used to analyzing data. I spent 25 years in that job and about 10 years before in other jobs analyzing data and, and, um, yeah, that's so, the short version. That's the short version. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine how. So, how do you apply that background to mm -hmm. your new book? Tell, tell us about that. Well, it's all because I was a researcher and a, a had a had a statistical mind that I did this project. I think I was breaking up with a boyfriend who I really loved, but we needed to part because we were just too different and living in different continents, and. Um, I, I thought, how can I, how can I get over him and also figure out who else, who I'd really like to be with? I don't want to just get another him like him, just duplicate him. Mm -hmm. I want to see what kind of men I might like to be with. And, and I had never had any long relationships except with him just for seven years. And I really hadn't really done this in a very focused way because I'd been so focused on my career. So mm -hmm. I thought, I'm going to look at this as a research project and say what type of man would be the best for me. And I, and then I, of course, that book, I mean, that movie, 50 First Dates, came into mind. And then I knew as a statistician that 50 is a, is a valid number to get um, significant results. So I kind of put those together. I thought, I'm going to go, you know, in the movie, she went on 50 dates with the same man. Um, and I'm going to go on 50 dates with different men as a sample. That's a, a big enough sample <laughs> to see uh, if it's a wide, a wide variety um, of types of men I'd like to be with. And so I did it as a research project, and I feel like that really helped the way I, I approached dating and how I was able to appreciate each man, man too. Because, because it was a research project, it was each person didn't have to be, oh, is this my guy? Is this my partner? Is this going to be mm -hmm. him? It was more, oh, what type is he? And how do I react to him? And how do we get along? And what are the good things about him and the good things about me? And do are we a match or do we could we potentially be a match? So it gave me this objective which um, view, which I already had as a researcher. I just kind of applied it to dating. And it doesn't mean I was cold in all numbers about it. I mean, my heart totally got involved along the way also with, with certain men. But it gave me a, um, a framework um, at that. And the other thing it did is give me a goal. Um, by giving, having a goal of 50, of 50, 
um, it made it gave me momentum in dating. So I wasn't just again, I wasn't just taking the first person who came along or putting all my hopes in one person and just if that worked out, I knew I could keep going. And that gave me a lightness about dating. Uh, so that while I was I was having fun dating, and some of my friends who were my age, this was my late fifties, were not having fun dating. And I thought, huh, this is a great, great way to do it. I went on all fifty dates. Um, towards the end, when I hadn't yet found my partner, I was vowing that I would do it again. I was going to start over because I was ha literally having so much fun. I was just used to it. This is how I live. I date. And I enjoy these men, and then I move on, and and, and it was yeah. So I was going to move on, but I didn't. Have so to. you were you were doing this as a as a data gathering study. Were you taking notes on people? Well, um, I was I was writing in my journal, which I wanted to say was one of the, is one of the best ways to take care of yourself when you're dating. I was it was part of my self affirmation and appreciating myself, and writing down what had happened and how I felt about it, and giving myself a little pep talk. And so I so I and I didn't I didn't know I was going to write a book. So but I ended up writing down a lot of the details of the dates um, because of that. So, so the I journal, had it. The journal yeah, it, it the helped. Book. Yes, it did. It did. Now, did you ever go at 27, go back to nine and be like, I don't know, nine might have been, <laughs> my, my, I got no, some good notes here think, on nine. That's a good <laughs> question because um, I didn't do that because really I did move on and it, I lingered with men um, for a while, sometimes a few months if I thought okay. they had potential. So I lingered with one, but one came back to me. One, we had what this one, one date just for tea one evening and I thought we really connected and he was talking about my intuition and it was really great connection. But he, he didn't touch me. I offered my hand and my shoulder. He didn't touch me, and I'm I'm very big on touch. After he left, he didn't con we, neither of us emailed. So I figured, oh well, this is one part of the dating. It's it's okay when you're moving on. It doesn't hurt as much. It's like okay, that didn't work out. I'm moving on to date number. He was date number four. I'm moving on to date five. Well, I was at a party somewhere between date 19 and 20, and he came up to me at the party and asked how my dating was going. He knew I was dating other people. And I said, oh, it's fine. I think I'm up to date, almost to date 20. And he said, put me on the list. Ooh. I said, what list? And he said, I, I want to I have another date. And I said, but you didn't even want to touch me when, I, when we had that one date. And he said, huh, I don't remember that. Try me. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so he, we had... Um, we got back together. We had a few other dates. He actually never, hardly ever touched me, but we had this emotional connection that ended up being um, very important to me. We had ended up doing a lot of talking on the phone, and he was a big emotional support to me during a hard time at work. And he, he was a coach, and um, he was coaching me about work, and I was helping him open up emotionally. It, it was a nice exchange, and I'm glad he came back. <laughs> so, So you must have met a lot of wonderful people along the way then. I did. I did. And, and yes, yes. I mean, they of all types. I mean, from businessmen, he was the, he was the type. There were a few spiritual businessmen that I really wanted to explore. But there were um, artists and contractors and let's see. Now I'm blanking out on everybody. Therapists. Well, there were a lot of people, Carolyn. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> right. I don't have to go through their <laughs> occupations yet. <laughs> do, you, in, do and, you intuitively know within... 10 seconds, whether there's a connection? Um, no, no. You know, in, in fact, there's another new book out about um, how, to, how to not die alone. And she talks about the spark is not an indicator. That spark mm. is not a good indicator of whether it's going to work. And so one of the things I knew from taking a lot of personal growth workshops is the way to appreciate someone is to actually look for the goodness in them. And really, it kind of fits with your approach, I think and 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 give them a chance and 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 know that you're not you maybe you will react to them because maybe their physical aspect or their their voice or something you don't like might put you off a little but if you spend a little time with them you could really like them so i was mm. going on that um mm. yeah that, that, that's so, so important though that, that and i appreciate your application of the i am approach i, I truly do that's mm -hmm. right i mean we can always see the value in each other Mm -hmm. uh, if we just look, so Dr. Joe's, so Dr. Joe's new book is personal growth. It would mm -hmm. go in the category of personal growth without mm -hmm. a doubt. Who did you enjoy learning from most when you were doing your 
personal uh, growth seminar? Well, I was lucky to kind of find um, the Human Awareness Institute. I don't know if you know of them. No, tell us about that. Yeah. I okay. saw that in your... Um, the, they are a personal growth... They, have, they are an organization that supports people loving themselves and loving other people. And they are, their slogan has been um, um, building a world that, in which everyone wins. I think it really fits with your approach. And the yeah. great thing is they're based here in California, but they have a New England branch. Um, oh, we and, should and definitely yeah, you should connect get them us. On. Connect yes. us. We'll get them on the show, um, absolutely. Uh, um, it's Human Awareness Institute, HAI.org. And I'm pretty okay. sure um, we had to go to virtual workshops during COVID, but we're starting to open up. That would be um, great. Yeah, we so, would love to have them on the show. Sure. So I learned a lot, and what they, we do a lot in those workshops is – learning to listen to people and not uh, try to fix them and trusting that each person knows what they need if they are just listened to. It's, it's the similar things. It's like if you can listen with respect and with love, um, people open up and feel really heard. And sometimes that's all you need to give to somebody. You don't have to stroke them or tell them something or something. So we do a lot of listening um, and just listening. We do a lot of appreciating people you know, what, what do we see that is great? We also do a lot of hard sharing, like what don't we like about ourselves and sharing that and just finding out that if you share that with other people, it's not so bad. They will be empathetic, not judgmental, at least in, right. a work, in this setting. And so it's a lot of experiences of learning to be vulnerable um, with your heart and your, um, your words. And, and um, and then we also do a lot of non-sexual touch, stroking faces and just rec remembering. And that's a theme in my book that there's non-sexual touch can be very nurturing along the way for dating, especially during dating, like dancing and just, you know, stroking people's face and things. I, that's throughout my book. So you were applying these HAI yes, techniques. I was. Wonderful. I, I was. And, and what was what was the reception like for that? How, how did people respond well um i can tell you a funny story but what i, I will but what, the most of the time um it was very subtle they didn't know what, that i was using techniques sure, i was just sure. being appreciative of them and listening and um and 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 the other thing i learned in those workshops was to not take it things personally so if someone didn't like me or didn't call back or didn't or was actually no one was really mean but um that it, that it wasn't anything to do with me. It was all to do with them, and I didn't have right. to take it personally. But the funny story would be um, I was with someone, and I had... And, um, I had would, you like to read, would you like to yeah. read an excerpt? I would, that, actually. Okay. Thank you. Let's, it let's it, it relates to the excerpt. Let's I hear an excerpt from the book. I'll this tell you, this, the excerpt is this, and then this, the funny story comes after this excerpt. But, okay, great. Um, this is actually from date number one, okay. and, it's called, and it's called Choice. Mm. This choice is a big theme in my book and in the high workshops. The highest HAI is spelled pronounced high. Hey. I was I was wondering, he said, if you'd like to come over and use the sauna. Well, what new age sensual Northern California girl does not accept an invitation at, to a sauna at 10 p.m. on a Sunday night? Mm. Over the years in the Bay Area, I had spent many a night naked in friends' hot tubs or saunas. I'd also spent enough time in clothing optional situations to know that being naked didn't necessarily imply being sexual. And yet the thought of being naked with Randy as in a sauna thrilled me. It was an innocent excitement. I was enjoying feeling turned on without assuming it would lead anywhere. I was good at letting men know how physically close or distant I wanted to be. Ten years of workshops on relationships had taught me the concept of being at choice, that at every moment I can choose differently. I didn't know what Randy was expecting, but I assumed that he would respect whatever my choices were. That's the excerpt. That is so important. That is such an important excerpt because yeah. so many people misinterpret. And we, if we're just listening and, and, and tuning in to the person, we can understand their choice. So what... what was the funny story well the funny th story is so we got out of this we had the sauna we were it was all very natural because we'd been in clothing optional situations before we were in the sauna we got out we put our robes on and and this was our first date but we were attracted to each other so we were kind of easing closer on the on the couch and then we started kissing which was just perfect just what i wanted 
And then, so I started stroking his face. You know, I, I'm used to that. I stroked his face. And he said, um, he said, I want to make love to you. And he, I said, oh, you know, <laughs> um, right now, I'm just happy kissing and stroking your face. Would that be okay if we did that? And he said, well, yeah, but I can't stop. I, I just can't. I, I can't. Um, if, if we do that, I will want to do more. So I said, well, oh, well, thank you. It's a work night. I better go. And I had to pull back because, you know, because it was a, I had to accept where he was, but that's what he said. He could not stop. And luckily he accepted me saying that nah, I just want to do this. And we just came to a mutual agreement. And I, I, hope, it was, I hope it wasn't just luck. I hope it wasn't just luck? luckily. Well, oh. you said luckily oh. he accepted your position as well. I hope it wasn't right. Luck, but that it was his choice and his mm -hmm. awareness yeah. of where you were at. That yeah. was date number one. That was date number one. Mark, you, Mark is intrigued. Did you start to think, hmm, this might not work as well as I planned? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually was disappointed when I walked out the door. And then I thought, wow, this is really working. I, I'm finding yeah. out what I like about someone. Because he had actually talked a lot, too, and didn't ask me any questions. So I was saying, OK, I, I just found out that I like someone who listens more. And I like someone who might value non-sexual touch. And I would like someone who is more recept more receptive to doing what I want to do. So I, I kind of had that information. So I it, I felt like that's what I'm doing. That's what this is about, gathering information. I went back yeah. to my researcher self. Right. And choice. Great, and great choice. title. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we, we've spoken about date number one, which, which was clearly an, an important educational moment where you, you began... I, I don't want to put words in mouth, but you began to recognize what this was really about and what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And let's hear another story about this. Okay, I'm going to skip to date number 27. Okay. Um, and, and I have a cute little excerpt. This is, I love this excerpt, but then I'll tell you the story. Okay. Um, because this is about... Um, what happened when what happens when I really want to be with someone when I really think they actually might be good for me and they mm. don't quite see it but mm. they're willing to keep dating with me that's what was happening with this guy he he said he wasn't ready to be in a relationship he was a business guy his business wasn't going very well he said he couldn't date but he kept dating me it was very confusing and I said and I thought we'd be great partners he was another biz, spiritual businessman and he um and so it was confusing so, so, so before, a, oh, before you get into the expert, I, I just want to, so what was it about this person, or, or is that going to come out in the expert? What was it about no. this person okay. that you just you know, you wanted to be with well, this person? Well, you know, as I was dating, part of the research part was I was collecting qualities of men I, I knew I wanted. And, you know, I kind of knew a little bit, but I was really starting to get clear on them. And I wanted someone who was smart. I wanted someone who was spiritual. I wanted someone who had their own life like projects like kept them busy because i was certainly busy and had a lot to do um and i wanted someone who could talk about feelings those are the basics you know um they also had to live nearby me because my ex had did not had not things like that but and they had to be nice so this guy was all of those things he was mm. so that's why i was pushing him a little hard so because this scene happened um we, we kind of said we're not Gonna, he said, I don't want to date. I mean, I don't want to be in a partnership with you, but I'm willing to be friends and maybe we can kiss. And I was thinking, thinking maybe if we keep kissing, we'll get, he'll, he'll see I'm a bit. Good. So I was doing that, but, but he said, um, okay. Um, um, he, let's see. So he kept saying, oh, so, but he kept texting me. He started texting me and that was the early days of texting. It was about, this was about 10 years ago to answer your question, Mark. And, and it was, um, when you get a text at work from someone, it feels very intimate. Like, mm. hello, how are you doing? Those first mm -hmm. texts were very kind of, right. ooh, right. exciting. Right. So I felt, so I, at, we were at a cafe and I said, you know, your, your texts make me feel really close to you. Um, and he said, yeah, I, I, was, I have been feeling that way. Um, I said, well, I, I feel, I'm feeling really close to you and I I'm, I'm really would like you to... I, I, something. I, I'm so, close. so here's the scene. So, so I want to hear the answer, but, but, but sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, one more contextual thing. Yeah. So between date one and 27, how much time are we looking at? Uh, I think this was probably about a year later. 
Okay, great. Let's yeah, because the hear. whole thing took two and a half years. Okay, day um, 27. Okay, um, so I must have said something like, I'm attracted, you know, you seem to very, you seem to very, very attracted to me because you keep sending me all these intimate texts. He said, I am very attracted to you. He said, I just don't think I can be the partner you want. Really? I said, trying to take that in. You're the first person I've dated whom I'm seriously considered as a partner. You don't have to be ready to be one. I just want to get to know you with the possibility of being partners in mind. You're the main scene for me. I don't even have a scene, he said. <laughs> That's it. It's a great, great vignette. Wonderful. I love that. He doesn't even have a scene. And I, and I kept... <laughs> Have you thought of, of of scripting this and making a? I mean, it could be a one woman show. It could be a great show. That's a great idea. It, it was that you know? way before I wrote it down. I was telling people the stories, so that I can see how that would work. Yeah. I could totally see it up there because it's. I mean, you, I could just see the audience just laughing and this. So, so was that a disappointment? I, yeah, actually, this is one of the more painful dates that I had um, mm. because. I've, he was, he was, um, he kept, he said he didn't want to date. He actually said he didn't want to touch very much, but he was both dating me and touching me. So I assumed he was kind of, he was overriding what is his own instincts, I think, but I let him do that. And I kept it, it, it gave me hope. And so it raised my expectations that he would stay. And so, um, after a little bit of this, he cut it off abruptly. He said, I said, I can't be a partner or or a lover to you i can't and i said but you were and he said no i can't he just and so it was very abrupt and it was it hurt because i because of i had played into my expectations and i it, it yeah it was the late least clear of the dates and thus the most painful yeah why, why do you think that is because it was the least clear why why then the most painful well i think because he's bit because, as I said, he was one of the first people that I really had great hopes for. There had been some other men that were potential, but early on they had said, no, I don't think we're a match and I can't keep dating you early on. But but this guy kept seeing me. Sure. Um, and so I, he got my hopes up. And mm -hmm. I, you know, the, the whole point of the dating project, I thought, was to protect myself. Really, it was a lot of protecting my heart from getting disappointed and hurt. And it didn't protect me from all everything. And, and I just had to accept that, that I was very sad and I and let down and I, I had invested some feelings in this. Luckily, I had a support group of friends, including my ex, who I could call or, or, or write and people rallied around me and said, oh, he wasn't right for you, <laughs> things like that. So, so did that jade dates 28, 29, 30, were you more reserved? And No, no, I, okay. I feel... I feel I do feel lucky that I have a resilient heart and mm. she gets hurt. And I think of her as a character because I talk to her when I, when she gets hurt, but she mm. gets bruised and heart, but then, but then I comfort her and, and we keep going and she opens up again. So I feel lucky in that I, I can do that. I mean, I, I learned a lot of optimism and uh, from my parents and looking on the sunny side and things like that. And I, so, um, so I kept, uh, what I did was I got hopeful. I just got hopeful. And that, that's where I, I returned to the project. Like, oh, that was only date 27. I've got almost half the, the ones to go now. Mm. And, and there's always the next one always brings some hope. Um, you know, that, that the next one will always be, be better. It, 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 it's a, it's a contradiction or it's a, um, uh, it's a, you're holding both things at the same time and that, I have hope for the next date, but there's also less weight on the next date because I know that there will be others. So that's how I protected my heart. So how does it end? Well, I found my partner. I found my partner within one of those dates. And um, I, I can't, it, it might be a secret which number he is. Yes. As a, but, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, let's, let's keep it a secret uh, yeah. for right now. <laughs> And, and this book, let's, let's just give people a little bit of a back. So, so people can go, do you have a website where people can pre-order yes. the book? Yes, okay. my website is, a, is my full name, um, carolynleearnold.com. I think you have to do the HTTSP, whatever, or www. Um, carolynleearnold.com, and there is a, one of the pages is places to order, and it includes 
several independent bookstores and ways you can get to your own independent bookstore to order it, as well as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iBooks. So wherever you want to order, you can do it from my website, through my that's, website. That's very nice. And so if you're in a certain area, you could actually ask your local bookstore to, to pre-order it for you? Yes, you can. And there's one of the links is Indie Books. You can look up what's the closest independent bookstore to you, and then you can either call them or go and get the book get, get the book ordered, which I really encourage because independent bookstores really need our support during this time. Um, so it's true. getting really hard on them, and they're, they're really the ones who are providing the diversity in books right so now. So true. And, and when is the, the release date? It's November, November 2nd, which does seem far away now, but it, it will come up. And so what you can do by pre-ordering, um, the, the, the bookstores will get it for you, I think, by November 2nd. And if it's an e-book, it will be in your e-thing. In your e. In your e. Thing. In your, in your e. <laughs> in your e <laughs> uh, that day. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And you have a blog as well. so people I'm just can... starting my blog now. Oh, yeah. If people go to my website and sign up for my uh, blog and um, it's really my blog email, which is really just gonna be my blog. It's gonna be a lot about dating tips and date, things I learned along the way on this dating project. And I'm also going to be announcing my book events, what's upcoming and also the podcast, which I went when we record this. Um, um, if they do that, if they sign up with their email, I will send them the detailed version of my 10 dating tips. Real dating tips. Yeah. Yeah, the, the dating tips are not that explicit, but they're in it. One of my blurbers, my reviewers said, um, it's um, it's no mere memoir, no mere memoir, but a handbook on how to date the adult way with effective communication, self-care, emotional responsibility, and joyful sexual freedom. So it's I'm modeling. I feel like I'm modeling how it could be done if one had was using really appreciative skills with people. Hmm. Do you want me to go back to the magical date? Let's do it. Let's hear okay. the magical okay. date. I don't have an excerpt from it, but um, it, he, he, he invited me to go outside, and it was drizzling, and, we, he, and he led me up this slope, and it was, I was wondering what he was doing, but I had met him on a Sierra Club hike, so we, we were hikers. I followed him up, to the, up, to, up the slope, and it was this magical hut filled with candles and music, ephemeral music playing. And it was just magical. We were way up above his house. We looked down on his house. It felt like we were in Lord of the Rings and those little houses on the hills. I was entranced. The only the pro only problem was I was really trying to like him. I might have taken my appreciative skills overboard on this one because um, he was really, I liked him because he was really nice. He'd done, he, and he was very creative um, musically and that way. But he was shorter than me. And I was trying to see if I could like someone who was shorter than me. And I knew I, up until then I wasn't usually attracted to people who were shorter than me. But I was giving it a try because I liked so many things about him. So this is why it was our fourth date. I was still there. <laughs> but, and um, I, 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 I couldn't get over the fact that he was short. It was just keep getting in my way in terms of my, my heart reaching open to him. So I, I, I think I made the mistake. This is the learning part, maybe. Um, of telling him that. I, I picked a moment that we were both on the same level, we were both sitting, and I said, I re George, I really want to be close to you, but something's getting in the way. And he said, what is it? And he said, and, and I said, I, I really, I, I, I'm used to being with men who are taller and you're shorter, so I'm just trying to get over that. And he said, why are you telling me that when I can't do anything about it? Mm. And of course, and, and, I, and I realized I wasn't that, that was not a very sensitive thing to say. It, it, he had a point. Why was I bringing it up? Um, and what I learned is that there are sensitivities in men and probably in women that shouldn't be, don't, that don't need to be said. I mean, I could have said, I, I don't think we're a match. I really like being with you, but I don't think it's going to work. There's a lot of other nicer ways to say it, uh, many of whom things the other men said and I said to the other men. So it, it's just that communication. So, so you didn't say, I'm sorry, you, you, you're coming up short. So, uh, which, which would have maybe. It's yeah, cute. Your house it. reminds me of the Shire, though. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah. that's, uh -huh. Right. You're just like a little hobbit, man. Um, so, <laughs> but, but, but it's yeah. true, isn't it? There's, there's some things that um, 
we learn. We learn people are sensitive and they, mm -hmm. that's their I am, that's who they mm -hmm. are. And there's nothing they can do about it. Mm -hmm. Powerful, powerful moment. Mm -hmm. Powerful moment. I also had another one, if you want, another anecdote. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was maybe date 14. Um, I was going out to dinner with someone. It was a blind date. A friend of mine, a male friend of mine had sent me out with him and, I, and he seemed nice on the phone. But he... Um, and this is about choice. This is where I didn't exercise my choice because I'm sorry, Carol. It just popped in my head because we're talking about a short guy. So now, so now this this guy's blind. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. he, he was actually a healer, and I expected him to be very nice and gentle. But on the way, he drove me. He picked me up to go to the restaurant, and I, I, and he said, I said, where are we going? He said, he named this restaurant. And I said, oh, I really don't like that kind of food. Could we go here? And he said, no, we're going here. Mm. And I said, oh, dear. He seems more rigid, a little rigid. Mm. <laughs> and I said, well, could we talk about it? He said, no. Now, at that point, I had a choice. I, I, I mean, I could have said this isn't going to work. But I decided to give him a chance. And we went to the restaurant, which was about five miles away from my house. And, um, and then in the restaurant, it kind of continued. Like he said, you must have this to eat. I said, I don't really like that. I like this. Um, and it was just, we were really just knocking heads and, um, he, to me, he seemed rigid. I guess I probably seemed rigid to him. I, I suggested maybe he would like the workshops that I used to attend and, and he was insulted by that <laughs> because, um, and, and, uh, it was just, and, and my choice was, could I have got just left because what, by, by the time we got back to my house, we were a little bit miffed very miffed at each other it was a bad experience for both of us i'm you know it was a little i could have probably taken an uber home there was a girlfriend who lived nearby the restaurant i could have gone to her house it's you know the, that the thing about um it's a very profound idea that we are at choice every moment especially in dating or sexual situations it's really okay to change your mind at any minute and it mm -hmm. does help if our the partners have to you know, some people don't understand that, and it might be hard to do that. But in ourselves, we need to know that we can change a situation, because that's the only way we can feel safe um, and um, and that we're in control of things. Yes, and, and I, I hope that that message is is loud and clear to everyone, because there was a long time in our history where where it didn't seem that way, where it seemed like once you're on some path, you right. have no choice. And it is critical that people hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, we're, have a few minutes. So the, the I am, as you know, has, has mm -hmm. two rules. Um, because the home, the social, the biological, and the IC domain interconnect, small changes can have big effects. So, Carolyn, what small change can you recommend to our listeners if, if they are embarking on dating? Uh, yeah, I have, I have a small change, it, but it's actually a big change. It, it's about doing very loving affirmations to yourself because we can't really offer ourselves as a partner to anyone unless we really love ourselves. We can't expect someone else to love us be, until we are. Mm. And so loving yourself, and one simple one is affirmations, and there are lots of books on affirmations to get. Um, just know that you're loving yourself, and then you'll attract someone who will love you. And, but, the, but you can't just love yourself alone. You know, you can't just go in a room and say, I love myself. We get that by um, reflection from other people. So be in a supportive community. Choose to be in a supportive people with, uh, with people who love you, who appreciate you. Be around people who will support you because that's the messages you're going to end up taking into yourself. So it's a kind of a combination. Right. But it's important. And that's that, that really that part is the I see domain. How, how you see yourself, how you think other people see you. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Everyone's valuable. That's what the I am is saying is, is you can look at yourself. This is the, my current maximum potential, but if I don't like it, I can change it. I can adapt. I can evolve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first rule, small change of big effect. The second, everyone is an I am, which means everyone's interested in what you think or feel about them, which means you control no one, but you influence everyone. That really fits into the story that you just told us. Yeah. So, Carolyn Lee Arnold, what kind of influence are you hoping to be? Well, I hope to be as someone who appreciates other people. And I've been wanting to doing that for a long time. 
that that it's amazing how much you can peace and love you can spread by just listening and appreciating who people are and it, rather than wondering how, what they're thinking about you start appreciating them and and um and they'll love you for it it's so in. true <laughs> it's true that and, and that fits right into the i am mm -hmm. everybody wants to feel valuable at every and any moment in time you can remind someone of their value and whenever you do that you increase your own value carolyn thank you so much for being a guest on the dr joe show you have really made us feel valuable by just being here and talking with us it was you. wonderful you three are wonderful interviewers and 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 account, um companies company so before we go one more thing how how do we get to your book how do we pre-order um carolyn lee arnold.com um and that's my website um and go to the one where it says where to buy and it will give you options of places to buy including both independent bookstores and the usual big bookstores it's great we got it on our site. All right, okay. folks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week on the Dr. Joe Show. Bye, everyone. Bye, Ben. Bye, Bye guys.